Hi YouTube, this is Patrick and this is my review of Dexter, Season 7, Episode 3. This one was great. Pretty much everything clicked. Every single plotline, I thought, just really clicked. I was disappointed in one plotline because it ended uh, with us maybe not really finding out enough information. I'll get to that anyway. Uh, See, so yeah, I guess just starting with, I just want to mention that once again, it's nice that Batista and LaGuerta didn't have a lot to do or, or that they didn't give them a lot of screen time because they didn't really have anything to do. Um, I'm just making it a point because this is where the show has faltered in some parts the past couple of seasons. And this week we saw Batista. He was at the one crime scene, had a couple of joking you know, moments with Dexter, and that was it. La Guerta has the Bay Harbor Butcher thing going on, but she didn't do anything with it this episode. She just, they left it alone for now. And this is stuff, this is important because it's stuff that this show needed to get better at. And so far they are. So, uh, yeah, I'm really, really, um, I, I just thought it should be just a, a point to, it, it's one of the things that made the episode good. Even though it seems insignificant, to me it's not. Uh, Quinn, now Quinn's story with the, uh, the stripper normally would be something you roll your eyes at. I said that last week. But I like that she told him that, she was supposed to talk to him and that she told him that she was in on it. Maybe she's not telling him that they told her to tell him this. We don't really know that yet, but you know, it's not going to be weeks of him trying to get with her. And then he just finds out that she, you know, that, um, that she's kind of like infiltrating him instead. He's trying to work out of it. It's, it's a little bit stupid that he's going to give her information and she's going to give him information. At least it, it, it does something. You know, and it's gonna, it's gonna come back and bite him in the ass, and most likely her too. So, um, yeah, at least it will amount to something, and uh, I like that. Okay, the Hannah McKay character, um, I liked her immediately. Uh, not just because she's gorgeous, but she seems like a more calculated Lila. Well, that's the vibe I'm getting. That she's gonna be a problem. She's gonna be a love interest and a problem, uh, pretty much like Lila. But um, she was just, she was fun right away. She was someone that, I, with her one brief scene, I wanted to see more of already. And um, again, I like that whatever we get with her, she's a bit of a mystery that, um, you know, it'll be nice to see kind of unfold. Hopefully it does unfold well. And uh, it's a nice addition. I think she's going to be a nice addition to the cast. So, um, so good job with one scene to make me, uh, to make me want to see more. Lewis. Now, I said last week that I was pretty sure this was going to happen in the spoiler part, that he was going to get killed by Isaac, but, um... Yeah. Basically, all the stuff with Lewis in the episode up until the ending I thought was really satisfying. He got exactly what he deserved at work. That was hilarious. With him, first it was hilarious, him giving Dexter the finger, and then Dexter, you know, just pretty much getting him fired. And then the thing with Jamie, I'm glad they, they did that with Jamie, that was good. Um, felt bad for her, but, you know, she was with the creep, so, yeah. Uh, it was funny, you know, saying, you know, if you pay for it, it's not cheating. Um, yeah, so all that stuff was really, really satisfying. And while I'm glad, I'm not exactly sad to see Lewis go at all, really. Uh, just because he was annoying. And he was pathetic, and the way he went out was kind of pathetic, so I guess that is fitting for the character. The thing is, we never really learned while he was, you know, trying to mess with Dexter. If it really was just, you know, the video game, that's kind of a, a lame reason. I mean, um, it is a lame reason. Now, I get that, you know, they could sit there and say, or someone could say, like, oh, look, I mean, at least his death is going to lead Isaac to Dexter. It's like, Isaac was going to find the boat anyway, and then you know, find Dexter anyway, so it doesn't really, so that doesn't really work. Um, if Lewis's name doesn't pop up again for the rest of the season and that's just it for him, that, you know, that's kind of lousy. Um, if they want to chalk it up and say that he was just one of the loose ends that they needed to get rid of from the really shitty season six, if that's how they want to, you know, spin it, you know, fine. Um, honestly, it's not, it really doesn't bother me that much because I'm enjoying everything else, but it, it is, you know... If we don't hear anything else, it, it is kind of, uh, it was kind of handled kind of lousy. Um, but, uh, and I can't, if, if some people, like, really, like, hate it and just want to really, like, bash the show for not, you know, following through on it, then I can't really argue.
But, uh, yeah, I won't miss you, Lewis. Sorry. I, I think Isaac's awesome. I think, um, had people tell me that he's a little too dull. I don't think he's dull at all. I actually think he's pretty fascinating. And I think the actor is taking a character that could be very dull and he's infusing him with, um, I don't know, just kind of like an effortless, uh, like kind of like charm and just, he's just so much more effective because of Ray Stevenson pretty much. And, uh, yeah, I really, really like the character. I think that, um, how he can be, the scene with him and Dexter was awesome. It was just really well written and I liked that. Obviously, we're going to get more of stuff between them for the, the season. I'm looking forward to it, uh, at least to their banter. Uh, you know, Isaac's a more intelligent guy and not as, you know, off-kilter crazy. So uh, it should be fun to hear their conversations. And um, as always, I like when Dexter, like, ties in the whole theme of the episode into, like, you know, random scenes and stuff like that. And that was one of them But Isaac saying they were both frustrated. So, uh, yeah, I like that a lot. Um, the one thing, though, I think we definitely see a bit more of his motivation because before he killed Lewis, he was really, really upset about this guy, Victor, that's missing. Really upset. And he's really emotional about it. So that leads me to think of one of two things. Either this guy, Victor, was like his brother or someone related to him, or Isaac's gay because he's been talking about love. He was paying no attention to the, uh, the strippers. And, and again, like I said, he was really, like, beat up about it. And he seems like he's going to show emotion. I mean, he seemed very cool and collected until he really figured out that this guy was dead. And um, it'll be interesting to see that the motivation um, against Dexter this season won't be because he's crazy, but will just be because of revenge. And uh, I th that seems like the way they're going to go. But, uh, yeah, I think Isaac's fantastic. I think... He's up there already with, um, or at least he's third in line behind uh, Trinity and Ice Truck, the Ice Truck Killer for our villains in the show. I mean, he's better than Lila and Miguel Prado and the Skinner and Travis and um, Jordan Chase, I think, already. Maybe I'm jumping the gun, but seriously, like, he really has a shot to be one hell of a villain. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing more of him. Everything with Dexter, again, was, was pretty much awesome. He, um... All the dream sequences were really, really funny. On top of the stuff with Lewis. Um, all the stuff he did with Masuka was funny. The, the scene with Batista was funny. Um, the stuff with Hannah McKay was good. Just, yeah, just all of it was just, you know, like I mentioned, the Dexter Isaac scene and everything like that. The stuff with him and Deb, the one thing I really liked about it is, first of all, that scene with them, it was nice visual of the two of them, like, enclosed in, a, like, a, a tight space. You know, because she's... You know, kind of like crushing him, I guess. Or not letting him be free or anything like that. So, um... So, yeah, so that, I, I, one thing I really liked is that they didn't have either one of them be stupid. It looked like they were having them both be stupid. Like, he tells her, look, you gotta leave me alone. And she says just, oh, okay. And I'm thinking, like, oh, come on. But then she tracks him. And then, instead of him, you know, who should know that he's, that he's being tracked, instead of him not knowing, he does know. And he's just open about it. That was good, because that was something, honestly, in the past, the show just would have went the original way, where they just both acted like idiots. So uh, I like that a lot. I like that they did work as a sort of a tag team to bring down this guy, although they didn't. Um, it was just nice to see as, like, a tandem, because it's different. And, um, yeah, it was convenient for her to kind of decide at the end to go let him uh, do what he has to do. But uh, if you've been watching this show since the beginning, you know convenience is what happens a lot on this show. Convenience and luck, a lot. There, you know, there are the good versions of it and the bad. Um, you know, the bad, like him being saved by the the boat full of random like killers last season. That was bad. Um, but this stuff was fine, and I like that the guy. There was consequence to it. The guy did kill the girl, and we do want to see this guy brought down. He's a big guy, so he's going to be a challenge. And uh, he's got that just a little bit of weird with the, the helmet thing. I have no idea why that girl even spent two seconds in that house, by the way. But uh, whatever on that. And then the ending scene was uh, just good. I like that Deb really has no idea what to do. Like, that was how that scene kind of ended. It wasn't like she's just, she's not 
like all in on what he's doing, but she's not against it. She's just kind of she's just kind of throwing her hands up in the air and going, "I don't know," right now, and she needs time. And that's kind of good because it's too early for her to make a decision. And um, yes, yeah, so she's kind of just you know, it's not surprising she did let him kill Jordan Chase, even though she doesn't know it was him yet. But um, yeah, so I really don't mind the way they're handling it. I know they're doing it fast, but I really don't mind it because a faster pace um, is what this show needs. So, yeah. All right, I love the episode. Tell me what you thought, and uh, I will see you guys next week. Later.